once again, welcome back to the flat. Okay, right, well, good afternoon everybody. Uh, once again, welcome back to the plot. Uh, I had to cut the video a little bit short last week. Um, I got a, a phone call and of course I had to just drop everything and uh, scuttle way back. So that was, uh, that was the um, the point of uh, cutting the video short last week. But not to worry, I'm, uh, I'm back up this week and hope we get to get this video online. As you can see, I'm, uh, I'm not in the forest. I'm stuck on a new peach tree in, the, in one of the polytones and it's absolutely laden with fruit. It's fantastic this year. There's loads of peaches on. But they're uh, well pleased with some of them are a little bit small for the moment. But uh, no doubt they're getting a nice blush on them. Or a nice pink. But uh, no, I think we're going to get a really worthwhile crop this year. I'm really pleased. So this is, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the peach tree in the tunnel. Uh, it's been it's been marvellous for a for a couple of years. Um, really producing some uh, some nice peaches, but I think this year it's had a bit of an open canopy because there's a big split in the polytunnel up on the top. But there's been fresh plenty of fresh air blown through. But anyway, that's uh, that's that. Uh, we we'll job tomorrow morning. We're coming in here, and uh, meanwhile just going to dig out two of these beers, and these are the. Uh, the jazzy potatoes. We've had some fantastic crops from the other greenhouse. We've been digging out the um, the early potatoes in there, and I had the rocket in there, and I had a few different varieties. But these ones are the jazzy. I'm really starting to die back. So what I'm, what I'm intending to do tomorrow is to get two of these beers dug out, and I've got some sweet corn ready to go in that place. But um, hopefully we'll get that there, uh, get that sorted next week. If we can get them all dug out, there's the first batch of sweet corn. We've already got one in the other tunnel, I'll show you when we we'll go through there. I've got some nice big cucumbers to plant out here, and as I say, there's some, there's some lovely sweet corn there ready to go in. Are, uh, just at a nice size there now. I planted them later this year, I didn't, I didn't want them too early, because I know the, um, the potatoes were going to take quite a while to come in. Uh, this is where I finished off last week, if you remember, the grapevine. And I've managed to get all this rod done, right way along here. Uh, just carefully spacing them out, eight, ten inches between each bunch and then two leaves past the bunch and just keeping the side shoots just have a pair of scissors handy and you can just go right through them each week and just cutting away the little side shoots that start sprouting from them uh, this is the the end of the, the rod on the other one and I've still got this side to do I'm going to tackle this tomorrow morning and this is an absolute jungle this normally I'm well on top of it by now but um, I've had uh, too much to do down home and um, too much to do up here, but there uh, I'm going to tackle this one tomorrow morning and get stuck right into this. Okay, so there's me, uh, there's me two barrels of uh, nectar, and of course this is what the peaches not have been getting fed on. I'll just get my little stir off here. I don't want to stir it too much, and I don't want to stop and say too long either, because it's fermenting absolutely fantastic, just the way I want it. This is a comfrey, and it absolutely stinks. <coughs> it's even getting on my chest there now. I'll break this crust on here on this one. You can see it, it's really yuck, but it's fantastic stuff. And this is where our nettle's going to, and it absolutely reeks. The stench is unbelievable. But if you can put up with the stench, don't use a, a rose watering can with this because you'll find there's a lot of um, fibers in amongst this. I'm covering myself, and I'll be absolutely stinking when I get home. You'll find there's a lot of fibre in the water, so you want an open neck watering can when you're feeding with this. Uh, not a rose, because the rose will just chuck straight up and get it hung back up. But the uh, sun's come out again. I come up tonight because it's been a gorgeous afternoon, then it clouded over about four o'clock. It's just on five o'clock there now, and, uh, and of course the sun's come back out. It's absolutely baking. So I'm going to have trouble watering down the night. Uh, but uh, here's the other two main barrels. As you see, we'll put the, the nettles into there. And that feeds all your, um, your onions, your leeks, uh, anything, uh, any brassicas. And of course it's high nitrogen. And your, uh, your potash comes from the comfrey. 
and the comfy to feed all your soft fruits. We'll go in and we'll have a look at some of the soft, soft fruits in the, um, in the other greenhouse. But uh, that's the state of play at the moment. I'm going to get these, um, get these leaks of good soap because they're absolutely bone dry. You can see on the floor, I had a quick short yesterday. I was here. Uh, I was cutting away on this vine, trimmed along, and I was absolutely cold with sweat. It's been absolutely roasting in here. And that's with two doors open and a hole in the roof. So you can imagine when we get our, when the when the tunnels are in full summer, you must have nets along the side. And that's how you have all the panels along there. We have nets at the back of them so we can take away the polythene. <coughs> you can see the nets there, letting the fresh air through. And they're an absolute must if you're thinking about building a polytunnel. Um, as I often say to people, if they're going to if they're going to have a polytunnel, just make sure you've got plenty of ventilation because it absolutely cooks in here. But uh, anyway, I'm going to water down in here, and before uh, before we knock off, we'll go in and we'll take a look at some of the soft fruit in the other greenhouse where we've got our tomatoes and that, and then we'll uh, we'll let you know how we've been getting on with that. Okay. Okay. Well, here we are. It's a uh, view in the 100 foot greenhouse. Uh, we managed to get a couple rows of Shirley in here. We took all your early potatoes out of there and uh, I must say we've got a fantastic crop when you can pull when you can pull the early potatoes out of the polytunnels like that at the greenhouse it's well worth it a fantastic crop and uh, we've got potatoes there to last me and Roger for a good couple of months and well into the, the time when we start ripping up them, uh, them late potatoes in the outside in the garden but as I say we've got the jazzy potatoes to start tomorrow uh, we're starting at, <coughs> starting that bottom polyton these sweet corn up here Roger planted them last week when we finished off the um, potatoes you know different totally different sweet corn I got them off my daughter here uh, for one of her friends and they're the rainbow mixed I've never grew them ones before yeah, I always like to stick with tradition, but uh, you know me, I, I try something different every year. So I've got some rainbow um, sweet corn and they grow really strong. Uh, nice, nice looking plants. I had them a little bit earlier than what than what did the F1 yellow ones, the um, the early. But uh, they come up really well. Just some, oh, I want to show you in here. As, uh, as we keep talking about the, uh, the barrels, um, the nettle barrel for the onions and leeks, everything else. And what peach tree, as with all fruit trees, they're growing really well. Um, reason being, they get well looked after. Uh, you know how I like to grow mine. At the beginning of the year, middle to late February, uh, I didn't do it this year because I was still poorly. So I had it. It was the end of March, beginning of April before I got the first feed on. But always mid February, I like to get a good feed of sulphur of potash, and that's around every fruit tree. That's a canes. That's a the rhubarb. The canes, the grapes, the raspberries, the all the fruit trees, apple, pear, plum, peach, get them all a really good handful of sulphate of potash and covered with a good mound of horse manure. And then when you water on top, all that good feed gets through it. Uh, reason being, the plants are just starting to come alive then, um, especially our cane fruits. They're just starting to, the sap's just starting to rise in the canes again. And of course, if that feeds there for them, all the better for them, it's going to make nice strong young plants. It comes springtime, they've got a the feed there, and that, that, they're really willing to pile the pounds of fruit on for you. And it's exactly the same with what with other fruits. Um, <coughs> this is just there, uh, one of our one of our little ones, and of course, nothing better than your own fresh strawberries. And of course, the, the plant itself, really green, really healthy. And uh, all these want is a little drink of uh, potash, a little drink of that um, juice that's through there. Um, they come free in and uh, they'll romp away. No chemical feeds, nothing. 3 to one mix. Mix with a bit of manure in October. And these were our own cuttings, were cuttings uh, from the strawberries, the runners that we took. Sink them in there and there's enough feed in there. As I say, my 3 to one mix has got a good couple of good handfuls of bone meal in. Yeah, bone meal is a long lasting feed. So it lasts for weeks, weeks when they start flowering. But on top of that, they get a potash, they get a little half a teaspoon of potash around them, just as the young buds are coming out. And then we'll follow up, they can, get, they can have a drink of, um, of the soup, I call it. That's the pot of the, um, <coughs> the comfrey in the water. It stinks to high heaven, but by God, it's a fantastic feed for the plants. 
And of course, nothing better than your own fresh strawberries. I've got about a dozen on here, and uh, we should start picking a few off last week, but uh, they're getting better, they're coming on. The strawberries are right along here. I don't like to do too much work in here, as I say, that this is a 100 foot greenhouse, and you see it's leaning right over. This is going to come down this year, and we're going to build a complete new one. Um, a quick crop, that's all. Shirley's nice and early, the tomatoes. The sweet corn will be out by August. So hopefully in September we can start, we can rip it down and start building a new one. From here, this part here is stopping up. This is the inside of the shed here. <coughs> the, in, the, the, the greenhouse I repaired two years ago. New roof, new sides. So this is stopping. It's just from this door frame here. This will all come down and we'll build a complete new one. Yeah, a solid back, but I'll, I'll take you all through it when I'm building it. Um, just to have a little peep along here. I've got um, we've got some Shirley tomatoes in here, and they're absolutely romping away, nice and strong. And these have been only planted a fortnight. Now, as I say, when you're making a your mix up, uh, once again, <coughs> we're three, two, one mix with a little bit of forced manure in the bottom of the bucket, and then with tomatoes placed in it, and of course they're, they're absolutely romping away. Now they've just started coming on the flowers. There's the first truss here, just coming on there, so I think it'll only be a matter of another couple of weeks before the first tomato is set. And once the first tomato is set, that's the time to start feeding them. No sooner than that, because what you don't want to do, you don't want to be pouring all of the goodness into the growth of the, of the plant, the, the foliage and the, the stems and that. And that's what's going to happen if you've got no flowers on, no fruit on, you're going to be feeding the plant, whereas you won't be feeding the fruit. So wait until your first tomato is set, you look tomatoes and then it's a perfect time to start feeding. Uh, I'm over the moon with them. See, good strong little plants. Uh, these are tomato Shirley. I've got about uh, five varieties I think this year. And that's uh, that's cut down on from last year. Ten varieties I think we had. But it was just getting too much. But uh, we like, we're all favourites. We've got cherry toms. I've got a giant orange in the bottom poly tunnel. They're romping away. Um, I've got money maker in the bottom tunnel. And I've got some uh, some nice cherry ones, Gardener's Delight, and of course the old Shirley. So plenty of tomatoes, plenty of um, different varieties. Uh, different people like different ones. Roger loves the big Spanish ones, big orange. He's cutting into them for his salads and that so always grow a good dozen of them for him. But I'm quite happy with the cherry ones or the Shirley. Nice, just a nice tomato, and of course the Gardener's Delight. You kind of go past them. But there, uh, that's it. Brilliant. I've showed you around. Uh, as I say, it's been uh, been hectic the last couple of weeks trying to get caught up on everything. We had potatoes in here, and what I've done here, I've, I've still got actually, I've still got um, I've just noticed on the bed here, I've still got cucumbers to plant out. So I think I'll be I'll be planting them out, and they're the uh, the yellow ones, the the climber ones. But we can put them on underneath the tomatoes in the old tunnel, or underneath the sweet corn, and they'll just crawl away under there. Uh, the uh, the crystal lemon. So they should be okay, but uh, the other ones, I've got cucumbers in the back and I've got uh, courgettes in the front here and that's just filled up where we had some of the early potatoes in. They were the first ones we dug out is to get them there, uh, is to get these, these big tubs emptied out and uh, refilled again. But that's exactly what we want to do with the tunnel tomorrow, is to start digging them potatoes out. Um, lovely potatoes, um, jazzy, a small kidney shape, but they're absolutely fantastic. Just a quick wash. Whack them in a pan and you've got a first class potato. Now we've had two or three people comment on, on ours uh, over the last fortnight, three weeks that we've been cropping. And uh, they can't believe the taste of it. Just goes to show you, homegrown, uh, there's no shock and beat the taste. I've never yet tasted a potato that tastes like ours, fresh out the out the ground, just washed straight in a pan. I've never had been able to taste something like that yet. And uh, as I say, when you give them to people in there, they just wonder. What the difference is, well, there you are. Organic, doesn't need any fertiliser, doesn't need any chemicals whatsoever. Just a nice clean ground, um, plenty of manure in, well watered. And of course, well watered, especially when they're inside and they're growing their polytunnels on it. And uh, just that little bit of frost protection. We normally plant ours around about the middle of January and we can just, just get away with it. Uh, we've got some heavy frost just here in the, in the middle of um, April and they burnt the tips of some of the potatoes in here. But they come through, uh, as I say, they just burnt them a little bit. 
but they come through and uh, we've got a first cross crop with them so it's worthwhile trying them even if you've got a greenhouse you can grow them in buckets uh, we have square containers all the um, refuse collection boxes we'll grow potatoes in them there in the bottom pool tunnel and you get a first cross crop out of them so it's worthwhile trying um, different things I've got some of these boxes down home in the back of me and what I'm doing I'm sowing carrots um, beetroots um, spring onions <coughs> All the little side salads and vegetables for down home. Uh, just little boxes outside. I'll probably start the video off next week down home. And we'll, because uh, I've got barrels down there and all. I've got barrels of nettles because I've got loads of nettles at the back of me. So I never let them go to waste. Chop them down, get them in, in the water, and you get a first class say, uh, As I say, if you can put up with the smell, you get a first class say, um, feed out of them. But um, I hope you're doing there, um, getting on all your QVS sprays. Uh, see, I've I've been going right through all the peppers and chilies, keep spraying them twice a week with the rhubarb juice. That's keeping them nice and clean. I've never had it with strawberries for about uh, four weeks, five weeks I've done them the last time, just before the fruits were starting to set. Give them a really good spraying and they've, they've kept really nice and clean since then. So I'm, I'm over the moon with them. Hopefully we'll get a few strawberries tomorrow. We'll go, go with a bit of ice cream on Sunday. That'll be, uh, that'll be champion for the end of the week. But uh, peach tree is absolutely on the way. By next week we should get some Nice peaches up there, I'm over the moon with that, that's great. Um, I'll be starting to seed so again in a couple of weeks time because we're at the beginning of June now. And so I'll give it about three weeks, I'll start sorting all, all my trays, pots, everything's got to be clean and put away. Um, I'm trying to find spaces to put them all. But what I'll have to do is start sorting some trays out, big seed trays, because I'll be setting off um, the winter the winter and spring uh, bed for next year. Of course the wallflowers, the Bellis daisy, pansies, all them, all, they'll all need sown round about there, last week in June, the first week in July. So I'll have to go up my seed box, check on my seeds and see what I've got and see what I haven't got and uh, send away. And of course if you want to start some, um, like the fox, fox gloves and that, if you want to start some them off, it's, uh, that's a perfect time, July into August, and you can either overwinter them, um, or you can plant them out in September, October time, you know, and they get a decent size, and hopefully they'll overwinter. What we like to do with the perennials, um, especially the foxgloves and that, we're over in the polytunnel, put them up on the benches, plenty of light, cold, no heating whatsoever, and they just uh, they'll just tick over nice and nice and gentle. Come springtime next year, you'll have a first class plant for planting out. But uh, that'll be the video at the end of this month, we'll, uh, we'll do all that. But in the meantime, we've got a few bits and pieces to sow outside. I'm getting the carrots out here, what big onions are in. Um, I'm just finishing off with some meat dahlias and we're getting the last of them planted tomorrow and hopefully that's all the garden planted out and then we can crack on with a couple of decent videos. Um, we'll go back in next week, we'll have a look at the vines again. Uh, I've got a vine down home, I'll, I'll probably start off down home next week. I've got a vine down home that I want to start training. I haven't touched it yet, I've just been watering it, feeding it. Um, it's got some lovely growth on it. So I'm going to take some canes down home and I'm going to start the wigwam. Um, with one framework, I've got the wires across, so I can just I can show you exactly how much I'm going to cut off and how I'm going to train it. So that's what we'll do next week. We'll have a look at the uh, the nettle barrel, the nettles down at home, um, and then we'll start in the grapevine, and then we'll pop up here and we'll uh, we'll see what we can get done up on the plot. Okay, I know it's a short video tonight, but as I say, I've been uh, been really busy. Uh, everybody's out celebrating. It's the um, the jubilee. Uh, been some great stuff on TV. I seen a little bit last night in the news and that. But uh, fortunately, my celebrations are in here. Once all this is laid out, once it's all planted out, I'll be over the moon. That'll be my celebration. But uh, that'll come soon enough, and then we can just start the weeding. Weeding, feeding, spraying, there's all that to be done. Um, so hopefully, we'll keep on top of it over the next few weeks. Okay, so I'll see you all again soon. Uh, as I say, if you cannot um, wait for the video, you can catch one on my Facebook page. I normally put a couple of photos up. I did with the peaches and that midweek um just to let people know we're still around uh you can see you can you can get one there uh, jeff form you um on the plot and get one on facebook page and you can comment on that through the week uh, i'm on most nights on the computer so if you've got questions and that you can yeah uh, you can ask us on there but apart from that we'll see, hopefully see you all again next week okay bye for now